Well, I think Rob Ford is probably essentially two people. And one of those people doesn't have very good judgment and has a problem with alcohol and drugs. Another person is working rather um, purposefully to do what he thinks is a good job. I think part of the reason he doesn't want to resign is because he doesn't want to let go of the part of himself that's trying to redeem his behavior by working diligently for the city of Toronto. I think people are not so surprised by his behavior because he's never claimed a kind of moral purity. He's more claimed the attempt to do something to clean up a certain kind of corruption or to put things in order. He's never claimed to be pure in his personal life, so there isn't that shock that there might be or that, that sense of the reprehensible that would go along with someone being pure caught out. He's not a televangelist, for example. Mm -hmm. um, Can I just clarify here? You, I mean, your specialty is with people with addictions. However, I, I'm pretty sure you're not coming here tonight to say, I've diagnosed this guy having seen a minute of him on tape, and therefore I know he is. Or are you? No, I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm trying to understand what someone who's caught in such a mess of contradictions is like. And, you know, if you're a heavy user of alcohol and at least a part-time user of drugs, those things usually go along together, um, what you do when you're not being the good person is kind of a haze. And then you wake up in the morning and you have a shower and you clean all that stuff off you and you think, well, I better, like, get my act together today and do something right and then you try that real hard for a few days and you know the pressure gets to you or you don't eat enough or you're a little hungover and the temptations that he's been you know associated with his whole life come back to haunt him and bang he's back in the bottom of the barrel again and it's like it's a continual in this sort of situation that kind of rise and fall is common can you make a judgment i, I you know this is your specialty so yeah. you tell us Based on what you've seen over the course of his three years of mayor and maybe his ten years prior as a city councillor and what you know about the events of today, can you come to a well, conclusion the, about him? One of the criteria for diagnosing someone with, a, with an alcohol abuse problem, and, and I'm not diagnosing him with that, is the expression of concern on the part of people who care. Now, I don't know enough about his personal drinking habits or his personal drug use habits to know what he's doing in terms of consumption. But I do know that his pattern of behavior has been sufficiently um, regular so that people from all sorts of, that he's associated with in all sorts of ways, some for him and some against him, have commented multiple times that he's done things that made him appear out of control and that cast doubt on the respectability of the mayor's office. I think his supporters think that he's not a good guy who's really trying hard to be a good guy and that in some ways he's really succeeding and I think that they don't see much sympathy for the good part of him being displayed in the press with who they're not that fond of anyways and so they have a lot of sympathy for him in, in the same way that Albertans had sympathy for Ralph Klein.